And now I'm going to go in, next to uh, more in deeper into the Sarod, the, the discovery of Sarod. So for that, we are going to talk about a little bit about um, Nawab Wajid Ali Shah. He was the 11th and the last king of Awad. Awad is a province. Um, and his kingdom was annexed by East India Company, and he was sent into um, uh, to um, a, a, a town called Mitiabruz, where he was given a small stipend and he was exiled there by the British uh, East India Company. He, by, by the way, was a musician in his own right. Um, and he, in his court, he had a descendant of uh, Tan Sen called Basat Khan. Now I'm going to go back to uh, Tan Sen's lineage and I'll show you where Bata Basat Khan sits. So here is Tan Sen's son's uh, uh, Gharana. And if you go down, down, and here, if you can see my hand, um, this is where Basat Khan is. So Basat Khan was a, a court musician of um, Ustad, uh, sorry, uh, Nawab Wajid Ali Shah. And with him was Niyamatullah Khan, who was the main disciple of Basad Khan. Uh, now, as I said, Niyamatullah Khan was a Rabab, yeah, he used to play the Afghani Rabab. He was a horse trader and also he used to play the Rabab. He came from Afghanistan. Um, and um, so during that time, when he and uh, Niyamatullah Khan and Basad Khan were in Wajid Ali Shah's court, Niyamatullah Khan wanted to learn the Indian music. He was fascinated by the rag, um, raga music. So he went to Basad Khan and he said that I want to learn the music. And then he brought with him his rabab. And uh, Basad Khan said that I cannot teach you uh, in this instrument because the, there are many disadvantages with rabab. One is that rabab, the, the, the strings, traditionally the strings were made of gut string, not, not, not metals. So they they weren't resonating. They couldn't you couldn't you couldn't sustain a note for a long time. It was more like a damped. Uh, when you pluck it, it would see, you would hear a damp noise. And also, um, rabab had only two octaves. It could it could allow only two octaves. And for Indian classical music, you need more than that. Um, so Basat Khan said that oh, I, I cannot teach you in this instrument. It's uh, it's not the, this instrument is not suited for Indian music. So Niyamatullah Khan went back, and uh, what he did is now I'm going to show you the rabab. He took off this uh, this region uh, and put a metal plate, and then he changed the gut strings to to um, metal strings, and converted this into a sarod. And then he went back to Basad Khan and said that, look, I have the instrument ready. Now, can you teach me? And from that point, he started learning from Basad Khan. And this is the first sarod that was created. It was created by uh, Ustad Niyamat. And it's actually, if you look at this sarod, it's a combination of the sar I'm going to show this picture of the sarod here. This is how the sarod looks like. Um, it's actually a combination of the rabab because it has the sympathetic strings, right? The sarod has the sympathetic strings here. Uh, over here, you see the sympathetic strings, the small, tiny little pegs. It has the same tiny little pegs as the rabab. And it's a, it's a combination of this instrument, which is called a shursringar. I'm, I'm going to say a little bit about shursringar as well, because look, in shursringar, it does not have the, um, rabab has, um, has, uh, uh, has a skin, uh, has a drum here, which is uh, covered by goat skin. So does Sarod. Sarod has a drum here. It's covered by the goat, string, uh, goat skin. But this instrument here, Shushringar, does not have anything. It's, it's all wood, but it does have a metal plate. So this, is, this metal plate is borrowed from Shushringar and put into Sarod. And the remaining part of the shape of the rabab is preserved. Um, now, sh about Shushringar, Shushringar is a derivative of uh, the Senya Rabab. And it was, it was created by someone called Jafar Khan. Now, he, again, is a Senya. I'm going to go back to the lineage and I'll show you where Jafar Khan stand, sits. 
here is Jafar Khan. He belonged to the Rabab, senior Rabab family of Tansin. And he is the one who is known to have created this Shrustringar from senior Rabab. And there is a story behind it, why he created that instrument here. So what happened was that, uh, now I'm gonna to go to the, the lineage, Tansin's lineage again to tell you the story. Uh, so if you look at these two uh, lineages, now here is Jafar Khan. So here's Jiwan Shah, who comes from Tansin's daughter's family. So he played the Veena. And this is Jafar Khan. They were both in the court of, um, uh, of Maharaja in, in Benares. And they were asked to perform in front of Maharaja of Benares. And, um, so the first person to go was Jiwan Shah. He played a beautiful rag with, uh, the, with, with his bina. Uh, but when it came to Jafar Khan's turn, he was a little bit scared because what happened with this rabab, the, the senior rabab, is that first of all, because it was a, the instrument has, did not have uh, metal strings, it had gut strings, and it had a hide here, skin, and it, and that, that day when they were having this, this concert, the weather was very bad. It was raining a lot. It was very humid. And in that temperature, in, in that climate, um, this hide captures a lot of moisture and his, the sound that was coming from his rabab was very bad. So he had to stop his, um, con his playing in the middle. And he, he told the Maharaja that, give me a few more days. I'm going to come back and play, play perform again. And realizing that these are the limitations of rabab that it's very sensitive to the weather and the fact that the gut strings don't help either what he did is he uh, invented this instrument the senya uh, the the shrustringar where you can see he took off the hide and he put uh, put wood on top and he took off gut strings and he put metal strings there and that's how the Shrusringar came. And then he created that instrument, he practiced, and he came back and performed in front of the Maharaja. So that's, that's a, that might be a story. That probably is a story. But that's, that's, that's a popular story of how Shrusringar was created. And um, it, it does look a, little, <clears throat> a lot like the same year above. Shrusringar is also not that popular anymore. It, it may be because of its dimensions. People don't play that anymore that much, but it's still there. But the uh, senior above is completely gone from uh, from the mu music. Does the sur singar? Uh, uh -huh. It has two gods, right? Yes. So it is closer to the Rudravina than the senior above. Um, so the Rudravina, if you look, um, the big difference is that in the sound quality. If you look at the Rudravina. The these frets are made of metal and there are metal strings going. So in order to pre create a sound, you would have to, it's like sitar. If you, you have to press the string against those frets. So it's a metal to metal contact. So the sound that will come out of a rudravina would be metallic sound. Uh, whereas if you um, look at the, the shru singar or the rabab, whichever, there is no fret. It's like sarod. And um, the strings are pressed against the against the, the metal board with your finger. So it's not a metal to metal contact. It's a nail or a, or a finger to metal contact. So the sound would be quite different, actually. And also, there is no fret. So it's it's a continuous. It's, um, I mean, it's it in it's it's really like sarod. So you you, you can slide it throughout the plate um, without getting obstructed by any any fret. And about the gourd. Um, it's usually might have been added later on to get more resonance. It, it's quite possible that when it was first created, there was no second chord on the, on the top. So, so now we, we found out this sarod, right? How sarod was created. It's a combination of the Shrustringar and the Afghani Rabab. And the Shrustringar is actually... So if you look at the flow, this Veena is not coming into the picture at all, right? Because you have the Senya Rabab, then the Shustringar, then the Afghani Rabab, and between with Shustringar and Afghani Rabab, you create the Sarod. So Veena is not into the picture as, as far as Sarod is concerned. Now, here I've put two pictures of the Sarod in, in below. Um, the reason being that this is the traditional Sarod that 
is played by the two karanas that come from the Afghani uh, ancestors. And this one, the one here with four pegs, as you can see, four, four, eight pegs at the end. Um, this is a sarod that was created by the Ustad Alauddin Khan. He created a separate karana. It's not coming from one of the Afghan ancestors. It's a separate karana. It's called the Maihar karana. So they use an in the sar the, this sarod. So there are two types of sarods, actually. One is the one that is used by the Karanas that are descended, that descended from the, the Afghani uh, ancestors. And the other one is the um, Maihar Karana, which, is, which was created by Ustad Al uh, Alauddin Khan. Now, I, I'll say a little bit about the Karanas itself. Um, so, as I said, there were three Afghani Karanas. One among them is called the Senya Shah Jahanpur Karana. So here, uh, the first three are too far um, back in history. We don't know much about them, but we know more about from um, the people from this period, Murad Ali Khan, Hussein Ali Khan, and Nanhe Khan. Now, so Nanhe Khan's son was Ustad Hafiz Ali Khan, and Hafiz Ali Khan's son is Ustad Amzad Ali Khan. We, we know him very well. Um, so that's one line. The other line is Murad Ali Khan. Now, from Murad Ali Khan, there you see between Murad Ali Khan and Abdullah Khan, there's a dotted line, not a, not a solid line. And the reason why there's a dotted line is because Abdullah Khan was not his inherited. I mean, he, he was not his, uh, he was not his son. So he, he was adopted by Murad Ali. He, Murad Ali Khan did not have a child or a son, actually, because at that time, girls were not allowed to uh, do music. So he adopted, uh, uh, because you, as we know that all these people were resident of Shah Jahanpur, where there were lots of Sarodias or Rababias, Rababia families. He, so Murad Ali adopted Abdullah Khan, who was a small, he was a, he was a small kid um, from that Mahola. So from the Sarodia, from the Rababia Mahola. And he trained him. And Abdullah Khan's son was Ustad Amir Khan. And then Amir, Ustad Amir Khan's disciple was Pandit Radhika Mohan Maitra. And from Radhika Mohan Maitra, you have Pandit Buddha Dev Das Gupta. And I learned from Pandit Buddha Dev Das Gupta. So I would be under, under him. So this is one gharana. So here, the, these are the other two gharanas. What happened at some point, I will show you, these two gharanas merged. So this is Karimullah Khan, um, Najaf Ali Khan, they were the, that, that's as far as we can go. Before that, we don't know. Um, now, here is Niyamatullah Khan, as you can see, who created the Sarod. And oh. then, from them, you have his two sons, Kiramatullah Khan and Asadullah Kukub Khan. Now, Niyamatullah Khan's daughter was married to Shafayat Ali Khan here. So here you have an alliance between Shafayat Ali Khan and the daughter of Niyamatullah Khan. So this is where the merge first happened between the two Karanas. And then Shafayat Ali Khan's, was, Khan's son was Sakawat Hussein Khan, who married uh, Ashadullah Kukub Khan's daughter. So there's a second alliance here. And these two led to the merger of these two Karanas. And then from Sakawat Hussein Khan, you have Umar Khan, Ilyas Khan, and then you have Irfan Muhammad Khan, who is still alive, and he's the last uh, descendant of this Karana, blood descendant. And the, this, this for, for some reason, this, this Karana has kind of gotten out of a focus completely. And one reason probably is that for, for this entire period, they did not train anybody outside their family who ended up being a musician. Um, they did, however, train some people who were just learning um, the, the, the music as a hobby, but who were like rich people and they, they wanted to learn an instrument. So they, they taught them, but they did not teach people who ended up being musicians. Um, there, there are, I mean, Ustad Irfan Muhammad Khan actually is, is, is another person who I, who I currently learn from because I want to also explore this new Karana. I have originally trained under Pandit um, Buddha Devdas Gupta, but I recently I started getting some training from Ustad, Ustad Muhammad Khan to get 
to know this Quran well. So uh, he told me that uh, Ustad Vilayat Khan, who was uh, who is probably one of the great sitarists, he once came to um, Ustad Sakawata Sen Khan and wanted to learn from him, but he did not take him as a student. So, so for some reason, they ended up not teaching people who and who were actually accomplished musicians. D- did they not teach? outsiders because this was their bread and butter it's like a patent if they give it to somebody else it can you know it would have Mm -hmm. impacted their uh, you know product so to speak yeah like you know coke formula is not given to anyone so that nobody else can uh, you know make coke so similarly if they gave gave out their trade secrets to somebody who would continue it as a profession he could go out and start his own garana and then that would impact them. I think so. I think I think that's that's. I think it comes from the the basic behavior of human being. Like I do not want to share my trade secret because that would be impacting my my children. So I think most of it was from that. But yeah, I think so. I mean, I cannot say for sure, but I, I think that's probably the reason. Because that is what made them unique and special, and that is why people call them. So if they gave that out to everybody, you know, on the street, then yeah. there would be nothing unique and special about them. Like I said, similar to Coke. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that that's probably the reason. But having said that, this Karana was the dominating Karana at, until Sakawa, actually, so up until Sakawa to Senka, this was, this was the Sarod Karana. There was no, no nobody else. I mean, this 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 Karana existed, but it was not as popular as this. This was this was Asadullah Kukub Khan, right, and Karamatullah Khan, and they actually brought and also Niyamatullah Khan to some extent. They brought Sarod in Bengal. Sarod, nobody knew about Sarod. They were the ones who brought this instrument into Bengal. And there is another story about Sakawatu Senka. He at when in the 1930s, I think there was an item in Olympics called performing arts. It doesn't exist anymore. Sakawat Hussein Ka went to, to, to compete for India there. And, and he ended up getting gold medal. So uh, this was the Karana at that time. But now it does, it has, you won't, you, won't, you won't hear recordings of the people, of these people in, in this Karana. They're not, they're not available in, commercially. So it's very strange. Um, and then... Then the last Karana I was talking about is the Ustad Alauddin Khan's Karana. There are many people, many names you will see. You will fam- you'll see a lot of familiar names here. So this is Ustad Alauddin Khan. They were actually, um, they, they are from East Bengal. And they were, uh, originally they were Hindus. Um, so you, you can see Binanath Dev Sharma. And then they converted into Islam. And then Alauddin Khan, of course, was Islam and he was um, a Muslim. And then he he's one of the biggest figures in mo- like post, um, post-independent post India because uh, he created a lot of big artists. Uh, Ali Akbar Khan Sahib, he was his son and definitely the, an amazing sort of player, uh, musician. Pandit Ravi Shankar. Nikhil Ban, Pandit Nikhil Banerjee, you name it. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, there are so many people whom uh, Ustad and um, Aladdin Khan Sahib um, taught. This is probably, at this at this point now, this is the most popular Karana. And whenever you would see some people um, playing Sarod, chances are that you would see this version of Sarod because this is from that Karana, as opposed to seeing this version of Sarod. So, Satyaki, a couple of questions about your involvement with Sarod. Uh, firstly, how did you get interested in Sarod? Um, so, uh, Pandit Bhutadev Das Gupta was a family friend. Um, so, we, I knew him from, my, my, my mother knew him from the time she was a kid. Um, so, I knew about Sarod and um, my mother's cousins, um, one of them is Pandit Sugato Nag, whom I learned from, uh, well, occasionally take lessons from. Um, and um, his older brother, um, they both learned from um, Pandit Bhutadev Das Gupta. Um, and his older brother was to play Sarod. So I, I, I kind of was very familiar with this instrument and I was very interested in them right from my childhood. 
Uh, what age did you begin your formal training? So, uh, Sarod, I started a little late. I started um, around 14 or 15 years, when I was 14 or 15 years old. But prior to that, I, for about six, seven years, maybe, I played tabla. So what made you kind of focus fully on Sarod and pretty much give up tabla? So they're, they're kind of quite different, right? And tabla is, is it's all rhythms and Sarod is melody. So I always liked the melody more than uh, the rhythms. And it was around that time when I, I really said, I, 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 I absolutely want to learn. Um, and, uh, not not continue with rhythm, but switch to melody, <laughs> and then. Mm. So again, thank you very much, and have a wonderful new year. You too. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.